Hi, everyone. This is Sean with the Mass Support Network here with your COVID-19 update for Friday, October 30th, 2020. So uh, here's your trigger warning right off the bat. Uh, everything's pretty bad this week. So with that, let's take a look at just how bad. Worldwide, we passed 45 million cases, uh, which was an increase of three, almost three and a half million new cases in the last week, which is in itself about 650,000 more than we saw the previous week. So uh, yeah, yikes. Uh, here in the US, we just crossed 9 million new cases, uh, which is uh, huge. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's with over half a million new cases in the last week alone. Uh, 5, 568,000 new cases in the last week, which is uh, 130,000 more cases than the week before. So there, and here in Massachusetts, we're also uh, reaching some new highs that we haven't seen in quite some time with 8.3 thousand new cases in the last week. So over 2,000 more than we saw the previous week. Uh, in terms of deaths, uh, things are uh, not doing quite as bad there. We're not seeing as much increase. Uh, about 45,000 new deaths worldwide, uh, which is uh, about 5,000 more than last week. But uh, in the US and in Massachusetts, death rate stayed fairly even, about 6,000 new deaths in the US in the past week and 141 in Massachusetts. So looking at these uh, graphically, uh, here's the, the uh, COVID tracking projects chart uh, from yesterday. Uh, as you can see, uh, everything is up there, though deaths are a little plateaued at the moment. Hopefully we'll continue to stay that way, but we'll see. Uh, so testing is, at least that is up with reaching our highest testing average ever, but also our ha highest average ever on, uh, on daily cases. So uh, we, yeah, this is higher than we've ever seen before. Uh, and uh, hospitalizations are not far behind there. And in a second, we'll look at how hospitalizations and cases correlate. Uh, but just to look at where this is happening right now. This is the new cases per million people uh, across the country. And uh, you can see, as you can see, it continues to just get worse and worse in the Midwest there with North Dakota and South Dakota being uh, the heavy, most heavily hit by population in the country right now. Um, that's you know, huge in states that are so small like that, uh, in rural areas where there aren't uh, as many services as you might get in a more populous state. Uh, it can be very bad. Looking at those hospitalizations here, uh, this is the hospitalizations uh, by a million people. So uh, nothing has hit, of course, those uh, early surges in the Northeast, what we saw back in the spring, uh, but we also uh, know a lot more now about uh, the disease. So we're doing a little bit better in uh, early prevention, but if you can see there, the Midwest has uh, reached a spike that is ahead of where it was back in the spring. It's the first area in the country to uh, reach a new high in terms of hospitalizations. Uh, and when we're talking about hospitalizations, uh, this is something I've said before, referred to as a lagging indicator, uh, where cases go up first and uh, then hospitalizations uh, start to rise about 12 days afterwards. So when we're reaching these peaks now, but hospitalizations are not quite as bad as they could be, well, we should kind of look ahead. Uh, so I guess uh, mark your calendar for Veterans Day because uh, that is when we should expect to see uh, a real uh, high point in hospitalizations, which is of course assuming that uh, we don't uh, get higher than we are right now. Uh, with cases, which very well might. So uh, you can see this trend here. Uh, it's interesting to note here, of course, that uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, it doesn't quite match, although the, uh, the rise and fall matches, but uh, the numbers don't. And this is one of the many ways that we believe that the initial case counts back in March and April were so much lower. We, obviously, we didn't have the testing capacity then. We were really only testing people you know, who were symptomatic, uh, it's likely that the actual case counts back in March and April were 
you know, five, 10 times more than what we know about. So looking at uh, this uh, pattern of hospitalizations and cases uh, broken down by region, you can see the same kind of trend where, where uh, about you know, 12 days, just under two weeks after the spikes uh, in cases, we see a subsequent spike in hospitalizations in the Midwest, uh, here in the Northeast, where we started to trend up as well. Uh, it's very apparent uh, in the South and uh, in the West, where it's going a little bit sl uh, slower curve than other places, but still uh, we should expect upticks there. So uh, let's look at developments. Obviously, as I've been saying, the biggest one is that this is the worst week of the pandemic in the United States uh, in terms of case counts. Um, Yesterday alone was about uh, 90,000 new cases across the country, uh, which is, uh, that's 1% of all the cases that we've recorded in the entire pandemic were yesterday. So, yikes. Uh, and uh, moving on from just that, uh, there are, New lockdowns in Europe, uh, Spain, Italy, France, Germany, Switzerland, most of Europe uh, are imposing new safety measures uh, following their increased case counts where they are also reaching new highs, many of them uh, surpassing their spring totals. Uh, now, unlike the spring lockdowns, which were uh, just general across the board lockdowns, these are a bit more focused. Uh, many of them have set end points being like a month long lockdowns because we know a little bit more about uh, spread so we can we don't have to make these open ended. And many of them are targeted closing down bars and restaurants, uh, a lot of them are focused towards keeping schools open as the last thing that we close down prioritizing schools over uh, all other forms of businesses uh, schools aren't really a business but. Um, so uh, these also can include things like curfews as well uh, so. Uh, and also different countries are doing this in different ways. Some are more severe than others. Uh, Germany, which is, has ha having some of the lightest uh, cases relatively, uh, is able to keep more open. Uh, and we'll see how these shake out in the coming weeks. Uh, on the vaccine front, uh, Pfizer pushed back its vaccine timetable. Uh, it was the, uh, the one group that was still making optimistic projections about an October vaccine, uh, but they don't have enough data yet to analyze it. So they said they won't be ready to seek uh, approval for their project until mid-November at least. Uh, with these vaccine projects, basically they have to, you know, they give a whole bunch of people either the vaccine or placebo, and they have to wait until a certain number of people get the disease in order to see if it was effective or not. And they can compare if the placebo group got two, three times as much COVID as the actual vaccine group, then they can tell how much, how effective the vaccine is. Uh, and then finally, also on the vaccine front, uh, Sanofi and Glasgow Smith Klein uh, have pledged uh, 200 mil million of, of their vaccines to COVAX, which is an organization working for equitable vaccine distribution. Uh, as we heard over the summer, uh, many vaccines have basically been pre-ordered by uh, specific nations, specifically the US. Um, which uh, leaves a concern that uh, many poorer nations are going to be unable to get vaccines for their people, uh, which will, of course, lead to a big uh, health imbalance uh, around the world in places which are already the most vulnerable. Uh, so uh, Sanofi and Glasgow Smith Klein uh, have pledged about 20% of their estimated uh, 2021 vaccine production. Uh, to this project. Uh, by comparison, the United States has ordered uh, 100 million of uh, this vaccine candidate. Okay, and you can find the stats and trends uh, data from this at, of course, the COVID tracking project, uh, the New York Times, uh, and mass.gov. And for more for the Mass Support Network, you can find us on our website or on social media. Remember, wear your mask, wash your hands, and we'll be here if you need us. Stay safe.